there's something about a nice, compact, small blaster that you can shoulder and deliver high-powered, accurate hits. And the Griffin, by flying all, does that. So, I went ahead and built one of these. We're going to go ahead and review it today. This is built out on 3S. We're going to talk about what I threw into it, do some checks on accuracy and chronograph. We are firing talons with the Adventure Force short dart, which is an awesome ammo type. So let's go ahead and jump right into this review. Now the Griffin's been out for some time now. I think it's actually been on Thingiverse for a year or over a year. And this uh, blaster doesn't get the attention it deserves because it is truly a phenomenal blaster. So I'm going to go through the build. I'm going to talk about all the items that you uh, would need to build one of these if you would like. And uh, we're going to just kind of talk about its performance and see what we got here. So starting with our ergonomics, this thing is extremely comfortable. Now this buffer tube does not adjust right now in its current configuration. I know there's stuff that you can get out there to make it actually adjust. I just fitted it for my profile and I kind of just, I actually friction fitted it in because it's, it's actually really tight. Let's start at the front of the blaster. So uh, much of the orange and actually a lot of the stuff that I printed was actually out of uh, Prusament. I'm a big fan of PET-G. So this whole area is pretty much Prusament. This centerpiece here is actually printed out of cork. Uh, it's like a cork filament. I was just kind of testing around with lightweight filaments and I ended up just painting it silver. In here we have some flywheels from Out of Darts. I'll go ahead and post a link to those. I believe I'm running Valkyries, so nothing too crazy as far as the motors. Valkyries are your kind of a cheaper low-end motor. Inside we have a Omcron switch for the rev. We have a rocker switch back here for full power turn on turn off. I do this whenever I do a voltmeter just so I can turn it on and off. And inside the battery tray, we have a XT60 connection. It's a male connection with a 3S LiPo currently. This kit comes with nice uh, sling mounts that are ambidextrous, so you can sling it on either side, which is really cool. There is a, a generous amount of Picatinny available. And something that I'm probably gonna do in the future with this blaster is upgrade the Ford section, because there is a a longer barrel version of this. Because right now I pretty much just hold about the mag well, maybe right here, but mainly I'm just holding at the mag well. Uh, there's not a lot on this current configuration for Ford grip, but there are options for that. And that's why I'm such a big fan of this platform because there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. I wired this up using 18 gauge silicone wire and it pretty much took about I don't know, it's about an hour or so to kind of do the wiring. It's a very simple build. It's just a, uh, there's a mechanical pusher in there, which it looks like you can actually actuate when the flywheels are not on. So that's kind of a problem. So you gotta be careful of that. I don't think I saw any mechanical locks for that in this design. So it's something you're gonna be aware of that you could jam your flywheels if you accidentally fire your trigger without the flywheels engaged. The scope I threw on this is just one of my personal scopes that is actually uh, costs way more than the blaster, but uh, I was just trying to show that you can throw whatever optics you want up there. I'm probably going to get like a cheap airsoft uh, kind of a kind of a hollow side or just a, a quick, you know, like a little red dot or something. I think that would go perfect on this blaster. Now I did put a list of all the parts used in this build. Um, one cool thing is this voltmeter, which uh, let me talk about that real quick. I got this from Containment Crew. It was almost perfect, but the sides were a little bit off. So I ended up just putting a little bit of foam, a little craft foam in there to kind of fill in the gap. I think it turned out pretty good. And the rocker switch, I'm not sure where I got that, but I'll go ahead and put another link to a rocker switch on out of darts that should work for this build. So that pretty much summarizes the construction of this blaster. Let's talk about the performance. So I went and did some chronograph readings and this thing was hitting pretty good, which out of these flywheels with Val Valkyries, that's not bad. If I were to throw something a little bit more aggressive in there, like some, you know, some Krakens or some Honey Badgers or something, I think we can get some pretty good numbers out of this thing. I'm also using the Bulldog flywheels from out of darts. So this is the first time I have used these. They seem all right, 
but I, there might be better flywheels for this setup. But consistently hitting 120 FPS is really good considering how accurate this thing is. So let's take a look at accuracy. Now, this thing was kind of a tack hammer at 30 feet. I know 30 feet is pretty close for engagements, but it's been a little cold and rainy out, so I had to stay in my garage to shoot the, uh, the accuracy, and I figure 30 feet should be sufficient, but I can see this thing being pretty decent at further engagement range. Probably, you could probably get tags at 100 feet, to tell you the truth. So in the end, do I recommend the Griffin? I am a big fan of this thing. If you like the aesthetics of it at all or the ergonomics or anything, like I'm a huge fan of this. I highly encourage people to make more of these things. If you have a 3D printer, the files are free. There's just a lot you can do. There's also stuff on Etsy where you can buy other body kits for it. And uh, there's also other files on Thingiverse in which you can kind of change and customize this, this blaster. So a lot you can do with it really reliable the talons and i think there is a katana magwell uh, i personally am a big fan of talons so yeah it's highly recommended even in today's ecosystem highly recommend this blaster so a question some of you might be wondering is what am i going to do with this thing uh, this has actually been built out for optiman uh, this is not my color scheme so um, i wanted to give him a good solid dependable primary that he could use for a fly as a flywheeler and I think this is it. I think I, I pretty much nailed it. Uh, he might be extending, having me extend the barrel on it. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of different options we can do with this. But that, that is where this thing is going. I'm probably going to throw it on the wall for now because uh, we're not really doing wars at the moment. But uh, when we do, I'm sure he will be thrilled to run this thing. And I think I might run it a little bit too. Well, I'm Dr. Flux, and that pretty much wraps up this review of the Griffin. I know there's a lot of offerings out there for 3D printed blasters, so let me know in the comment section if this is something you would like to print out. I personally am a big fan of the aesthetics of it. I think it just looks phenomenal, so that's my personal preference. But I'd like to hear what you all have to say, because... There's also a lot of good integrations on this. Well, I want to thank you again for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, happy foam flinging.